Again, this is sort of a follow-up to uh, the more in-depth show we did a while back on lethal autonomous stuff. Um, there's a good piece at, Bo at Vox.com about um, creating rules for how the police can use lethal autonomous stuff, uh, either whether it's autonomous or, or remotely controlled, I think we're um, lumping in. Uh, in that article. But what I wanted to highlight for people that um, I found really fascinating is this project uh, that is um, part of um, MIT. It is called Moral Machine. I think it's part of the Media Lab, uh, MIT Media Lab, Scalable Cooperation and uh, MIT itself. Uh, the Moral Machine is a platform for gathering human perspective on moral decisions made by machine intelligence, such as self-driving cars, of course, also such as other more um, overtly lethal stuff. Uh, and what this does is uh, shows you moral dilemmas. It is so depressing. I have walked myself through uh, the 12 scenarios that it presents to you, and I think it presents different scenarios to different people, where a driverless car must choose the lesser of two evils, such as killing two passengers or five pedestrians. Um, so you're supposed to judge the outcome you think is more acceptable. And uh, the goal of the, you can also suggest scenarios uh, if you think that they're, they're not getting at you know, the crux of some thorny ethical dilemma that a lethal decision-making system might have to autonomously make. You can help them uh, design scenarios that uh, they can then have other people answer. It's really fascinating um, just to help them gather this information. So um, I thought that perhaps our audience might be interested in uh, providing MIT with their two cents about um, the lesser of these evils. Did either of you take a look at this, Amanda? I just saw that there was a dog versus cats one, which is sort of surprising um, and interesting. Um, but I actually had a question. When you were going through, did you take the scenario seriously and answer the way that you would like um, an autonomous vehicle to respond? Or did you were you just looking to see what the different outcomes were? I took it seriously. And I think that that's, that's part of the problem of their information gathering, say. right? There, yes, there are probably people that wouldn't do that. Um, and and yeah, I'm would, sure there's already people who are saying, is there a way for the car to just swerve and kill everybody? And, and we would like to suggest <laughs> that, which is troubling because if you're going to crowdsource morals for machines, and it's sort of in the same way that you are curious about reducing algorithmic bias, if you're having human inputs there's going to be some there's going to be some uh, some issues that diverge. You're going to have biased algorithms from biased humans and you're going to have immoral outcomes from folks who are either doing it for messing with the system for the lulls, as it were, or right. you actually just have a, a, a moral pro perspective that diverges from what would normally be a majority view. Yes. And hopefully they can correct for that a bit. Yes. Uh, <laughs> one, one of the variables I found really interesting in going through their scenarios is that there is this um, aspect you're supposed to factor into your decision-making whether the people to be killed are um, morally okay themselves. I mean, it, it factors Ooh. in, you're, you're presented with whether the driver of the car who's about to crash or the person in the intersection is a criminal or whether the people in the intersection are crossing against the light or not. That's that's a variable that comes up over and over again. You know, are you taking your, are you, do you take your life into your own hands if um, you're crossing against the light? And I think, you know, I think as these... <laughs> Um, system self-driving cars being a good example uh, become more and more prevalent that yeah you're taking your life into your own hands um, because that might well be one of the ways that they're programmed they're you know like a an ambulance or a fire truck that not that they're able to control the lights but they're able to have information that's fed to them um, about whether the light has turned or not and that they make some assumptions based on that. And they're not going to be able to slam on the brakes if, if you assume. And just coming back from New York, Amanda, my God, oh, yeah. people cross against the light there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was oh, freaking yeah. me out. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that in California. We wait for the light. <laughs> no, you don't do that in California. That is how you get yeah. a jaywalking ticket. But here, it's a, it's a really different situation. And I'm curious about whether, sort of, not necessarily from a moral perspective, but whether social contacts should affect how autonomous vehicles behave. Because 
if you tell an autonomous vehicle that anyone crossing against the light and is is fair game, New York City is in real trouble if they start rolling out <laughs> autonomous vehicles. Uh, myself included. We're all in, we're in big trouble. Right. I could just see the disaster movie taking shape as we speak. Um, Mike, any thoughts? Yes. Yeah, so I actually went through and like you, Denise, I, I took the test very seriously and it was, uh, I was, I was somewhat troubled by how I rationalized certain decisions as I kind of looked at it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, like I would what? go through and there was, well, like, like there was one scenario, like I think the opening scenario was at least the one that I was presented with. You're in the, the autonomously driven car, you've got a child and a mother. And then in the crosswalk, you've got three old ladies. And so you choose between, you know, which scenario, who do you save? And I saved the, I saved the, the baby and the mother. And then there were, which seemed to me to be maybe a, a little bit easier dilemma. I hated, I hated being given the choice, you know, and, and, put to the test here, but I did save the baby and the mother in that scenario. The other scenario that was maybe a little bit more difficult that I found myself rationalizing through was there was one car with three athletes and then in the crosswalk was three men. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, okay, well, geez, who do I do? You know, well, these three men, maybe they have families, maybe these three athletes are troublemakers. And so I'm kind of literally going through this, this calculus, albeit briefly in my head. Uh, to see which way I should decide. And then there was another one where I thought, well, it was similar to the the first scenario where it was the baby and the mother uh, and the three old ladies. And I thought, well, last time I, I saved the mother and the and the baby. So this time I'm actually not going to save the mother and the baby. So it was like, you know, it was interesting how I kind of rationalized my way, my trying way to through. Trying to come to a kind of equilibrium in your decision making. Yeah, exactly. Trying to you know, spread the pain, I guess, in, in some ways. The easier dilemma for me was there were some scenarios where it was a dog and a cat, you know, save yeah. the save the animals or save the people. I mean, that from, from my perspective was a, a pretty easy, pretty easy uh, situation. Uh, it actuaries. was curious, though, that that some of the people that you would be saved, you know, that you would be uh, given the choice to save would be, you know, criminals versus uh, doctors. And I don't know how you necessarily how an autonomous vehicle necessarily <laughs> can differentiate between the two. Uh, but I found myself when I was faced with that dilemma, of course, saving the saving the doctors versus saving the uh, the criminals. So. I don't right. know. It was it was very fascinating. I encourage people to take a look at it. If nothing else, I think it's it, it's an interesting exercise to see how you would how how you if you were an autonomous uh, vehicle how you'd go about making that determination. I wonder if actuaries would provide an interesting point of of comparison for just sort of normal normal interactions with the moral machine because actuaries are trained to sort of make these kinds of judgment calls about. You know what I mean? When, when they're appraising insurance policies or what have you, they're using math and statistics to figure out what are the likelihood of potential outcomes. And I wonder what the, the results of that moral machine input would be as compared to folks mm. who are making more more sort of what you were saying earlier, Mike, sort of gut or, you know, trying to reach an equilibrium um, rather than, than maybe something that's really solely rooted in, in, in a mathematical um, model. I'd be curious to hear more about that. You, you hit on something, Mike, that did completely creep me out while, while I was taking that, and that is that these re- researchers at MIT seem to be assuming that the machine will know whether you're a doctor or a criminal <laughs> or your age. <laughs> what happens to the doctor criminal? What happens to that person? I don't know that the that's autonomous right. car is prepared for that. No, that's right. There are some bad docs out there.